What is it? What is it? Okay, wait. How long we got here? <clears throat> I don't want to be late. Arno Penzias was late for his Nobel Prize. I don't think so. <laughs> Are we filming now? Yes. I swear to you that this is the most profound thing you will hear in your entire life. The sound or the story? The sound or the story? What's the difference? You were a team. I mean, you're both getting the Nobel Prize this evening. I put them up for the job. And they wouldn't let me in on the interview. So I loitered around. And when Bob and the interview committee came out, doing their handshakes and thank you for coming and we'll let you know, I moved in. You gave him the job, right? You gave Bob the job, didn't you? There was this kind of embarrassed pause. So I told him straight, Bob and I are gonna walk down the corridor right here and right out that door right there. And if you don't want Bob to have the job that he was born to do, then you call it before we go through that door. Longest walk of my life. 62 paces. And we never look back. It was beautiful. I came out of the woods and there it was, a perfect piece of equipment. The antenna, a great big horn, like a gramophone horn lying on its side, the size of a house in the middle of a field on a hill 20 miles out of New York City, picking up the hiss. Pointing at the stars. And picking up the hiss. And then the first time I saw that horn, you know what? Well, they flew right out of her. Who? The pigeons. The 20 foot horn had a couple of pigeons living inside it. Pigeons? Pigeons. What was it for, the 20-foot horn, apart from pigeon nesting? We wanted to measure noise from the outer edges of the Milky Way. Arno built a cold load. What's that? Five imperial gallons of liquid helium. You know how much helium that is? It's a hell of a quantity of helium. It gives you an unbelievably accurate reference against which you can measure the noise you receive. Arno is very precise. He makes these things better than anyone. Maybe it's the German in me. You're German? First six years of my life and a big chunk of my temperament. <laughs> Bob made a great switch. To connect the receiver alternately to the antenna and the cold load reference. Were you born in Germany? When? The 1940s? No, 1930s. Noise is heat. The higher the heat, the more intense the noise. You may want to ask, did we get noise? We got a lot of noise, which means a lot of heat far more than the Milky Way should have given us. That was our work from then on in. Day after day, what's all this heat? What the hell is this hiss? The heat we were receiving from out there should have been two degrees colder than the cold lobe, the reference, but it was hotter, three degrees hotter. Hotter than the Milky Way could produce. Hotter than the sum of all the galaxies beyond. So we figured- It had to be something closer to home. We had an idea. It was that you had the idea. I don't remember. Oh, we had a whole laundry list of ideas. <laughs> Maybe it was me. Maybe it was you. You were a team. Maybe it was me. What was the idea? There was some high altitude bomb testing back in the 50s. Maybe it's the leftover radiation. Maybe our hiss is falling. But it would have diminished over time. And what we were getting? Totally constant. No diminishing. Back to the laundry list. <laughs> <laughs> White dielectric material. I'm sorry? Lots of it inside the antenna horn. Had to be it? Had to be the cause of the hiss. White dielectric material. Yes. Pigeon shit. Oh. All over the horn. You know what we did? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What did you do? We posted them. The pigeons? We posted the pigeons. The people we worked for had uh, internal mail and offices all over America. We posted the pigeons as far away as we could send them. Did it work? They came home. They were homing pigeons. They weren't ready to leave. So what did you do? He, he, uh... We had the pigeons shot. No. Bob had the pigeon shot. You killed the pigeons. A technician. A technician killed the pigeons. And then we cleared out all the white dielectric material from inside the horn. On our hands and knees and our white lab coats inside the horn, scraping away the white stuff. And? The pigeons were innocent. The hiss was still there. The pigeon shit was not the hiss. Is that all right? Can I say that on television? Maybe it's New York. 
Maybe the Hess is New York, we said. New York? How? Well, we figured that if any city in the world could give you three degrees of hot radio noise, it must be the Big Apple. My family alone could probably make this much hiss. We were struggling to think what else it could be. You were guessing? How could we claim to be making very sensitive radio astronomy measurements with all that man-made stuff around? We pointed the antenna at New York City. All that energy spread out across the northern horizon, arcing from subway rails, hum from power lines, the radar amplifier at Kennedy Airport spewing out radio noise by the kilowatt. And I'm thinking, just maybe, just maybe, this town, this town of all towns, might crank up three degrees of hiss. You said you were from Germany. When did you leave Germany? Maybe we should stop filming. We came to America when I was six years old. We lived in a two-room apartment in the garment district. Me, my brother, and my parents, and the cockroaches in the kitchen. We were poor. That's why I became a physicist. Not to get rich, not to win the Nobel, to stop being poor. New York wasn't it. We pointed the 20-foot horn at the city, and it gave us a reasonable amount, but... Not enough heat. Not enough. To win the Nobel Prize, you have to find something. Am I right? It's not about thinking or theory. It's about discovery. But do you have to be looking for the thing that you find? Science can be slow work. It's hardly ever about eureka moments in the bath. You need precision, tenacity, dedication. German talents. Did you have any idea what it might be? Did you think you knew? Or was it just guessing? Is that what you're trying to say? A Nobel Prize for guesswork? Is that the story you're after? Let me tell you something. Are we still filming? Good, good. In 1939, my mother and father put me on a train filled with Jewish children heading to England. Kinder transport. Are you okay? The Nazis were letting some children go. Not the adults, just some children. At the station, my mother looked into my face and said for me to look out for my little brother, not to let our suitcase out of my sight, and don't lose your name tag. Arno Penzias, here. You lose your name tag, you lose your name, and you lose everything. And she went. How old were you? I was six. Did you see her again? I was six, my little brother was five. She didn't cry. She made like it was a normal thing, and not crying was part of that. Can you imagine how hard it must have been not to cry? To put your boys on a train like that and not to cry. I've hated suitcases ever since. He likes to unpack. My mother and my father got out. Six months later, we sailed for America together. England saved my life. America gave me a brand new one. But I never, I never dreamed of this happening. We discovered this. We found this. We discovered this. What is it? We have to go on. It connects. You understand? It goes right through Dachau. Right through childhood. Right through cockroaches and suitcases and right through America and the American dream, which I have lived. You understand me? This noise. This goddamn beautiful hiss. It connects. It's the sound of the beginning of time. The leftover heat from the Big Bang. The three degrees that hasn't cooled yet. It's everywhere. It's all around us. It's 15 billion years old. And we found it. 
That's our discovery. We have to go get the prize, Arnold. 